Hello YouTube, Goddard Radio Mosque here again with another beer review for you, as is usual. Um, now for this one we're going to do a beer that is very local to my hometown if you like. I'm from the county of Clipmanninshire in Scotland and we have two craft breweries in this area, although the, the area is actually very famous for being the storage place for a lot of whiskey. They say that the whiskey in Clipmanninshire is worth more than the Golden Fort Knox, but I'm not sure how true that is. But we have two craft breweries here, that's the Williams Brothers Brewery, although they moved here from uh, Glasgow, they were originally a home brew shop and then they moved to Straven and then on to Gla and then into Clipmanninshire but the original Clipmanninshire craft brewery is the Harveston Brewery so we're going to have a little look today at their old engine oil porter beer and I've reviewed a couple of these beers for you before the link to the brewery website and to the link to those video reviews is in the video description there so check that out if you are interested for this review I also want to give a shout out to my friend Paul at PA Brew News he really loves Scottish beers and this is one that he this is one of his favorites that he's told me on another number of occasions and he said that I really need to review this one so a shout out to Paul in this beer review. So um, as is usual with my beer reviews then I'll take you through a brief history of the brewery and tell you a little bit about where the beer comes from and uh, as I always say if you are simply just interested in the tasting of this beer just fast forward towards the second half of the video where you will catch that and I'll try and put the little box up here for you again that you can just click and go there. So anyway just so you know exactly the area of Scotland we're talking about here I always describe Scotland as looking a bit like a monster's head so sort of on the back of the neck of the monster if you like you have the city of Glasgow and then on the sort of uh, just on the east coast if you like you have the city of Edinburgh which is just on the sort of uh, how would you describe it on the sort of bottom of the mouth if you like of the monster you have the city of Edinburgh right in the middle of these two cities you have the town of Stirling just to the north a little bit very very historic for Robert the Bruce and William Wallace and then just to the east there in the sort of southeast and eastern part of Stirling you have the county of Clipmanninshire and that's where I come from there. But to go on to the history of the, of the Harveston Brewery itself, the brewery goes back to the year 1983, so it's one of the older Scottish craft breweries. I think it might be the second oldest after the Broughton one, but I'm not exactly sure about that. But at this point, Ken Brooker was actually brewing beers in his shed to share with his friends, at the, and the traditional tasting, uh, Tuesday, the Tuesday night tasting at Ken's gradually grew into attracting about 40 people per time through friends of friends, spreading word of mouth and things like that, you know. But um, at these nights Ken would actually insist that his guests filled out tasting notes so he knew how he was getting on with his beers. Now in 1986 Ken actually received planning permission to convert a 200 year old steading in dollar into a brewery. A steading just so those of you know is a sort of Scottish word for the kind of collective farmyard if you like, just all the buildings essentially. But dollar as I mentioned is a little town in the, the Oco foothills not far from Stirling and the Oco foothills just go along the sort of northern part of Stirling and when you go over those hills you get to Perth known as the heart of Scotland. Scotland if you like. But they gradually built up this steading into a functioning brewery with very little money and they actually built a lot of their equipment from salvage. Apparently the original mash tun was previously used for jam and then the boiler was actually used as a dye tun for dyeing wool and at this point the brewery was actually only producing one beer which was called the Harveston Real Ale. Now in 1988 due to increasing demand they added two new ales to their repertoire. This was the 80 shilling uh, ale and uh, the 80 shilling Waverly sorry and the 70 shilling Old Manor strong ale and just so those of you know I'm not sure how common this is in America but the shilling is just sort of a slash and then a dash and it's an old measurement of the density in Scotland for beer but after this in 1989 Ken actually took the decision to invest in the brewery and he installed it with a professional brew kit and this was six years after he'd started his hobby it was really starting to get serious for him but they introduced a few new beers over the coming years this included the Montrose ale in 1990 the Ptarmigan 85 shilling and in 1990 and apparently the name was designed to confuse the English of this one but as you can see when I try and pronounce it it confuses the Scots as well but in the future and uh, the Shehalian Lager was also introduced in 1994 and it won awards in 1996, 97 and 99 and they say that no one at the brewery actually predicted the future success of this beer and in my opinion this is the best beer that they do although I can't say that really because I've not tried this one yet but it's a really beautiful lager one of the best lagers I'm sure you would actually find in the world in my opinion a really top quality beer that one but they were also experimenting with different recipes over this period of time and in 1995 Stuart Cale actually joined the brewery as head brewer from the Vox brewery in England 
Now, in 1996, their Liberation Beer won the first Tesco Beer Challenge, and this resulted in the first bulk order for the brewery. And they actually say that the day the tanker arrived to take their beer away to be sold, it really strengthened their belief that their beers, the beers they were producing, were of the highest quality. And the following year, the Bitter and Twisted was then introduced, and the brewery consider this as their flagship beer. And they started their first exports to the US in partnership with Matthias Needhart from BA United International, who was keen to import quality beers over to the United States. Now for the turn of the new century the brewery introduced the old engine oil beer this guy here which they used to enter the Tesco beer challenge again and they also won it this time once more but this is apparently one of head brewer Stewart's favourite beers and it actually allowed them, to, allowed them to create the engineers reserve and the Ola Duff series and in 2002 they aged this beer in whiskey casks from the Dalmore distillery to produce old engine oil special reserve which was an exclusive for the US market although I hope they bring it back here in at some point in the future. I don't think you can get that one anymore. But the following year in 2003, the Bitter and Twisted actually won Supreme Champion at the Great British Beer Festival. And that same year, the brewery decided that the steading and dollar was actually no longer big enough to produce the beers to meet demand. So they moved a few miles down the road to uh, the Alva Industrial Estate. And they won, and that year as well, they also won the Best Bottled Beer Award at the International Beer Award. So as you can see, this brewery is actually very, very decorated. And in my opinion, they do produce some really top quality beers probably one of, one of the best if not the best craft brewery in Scotland but in 2006 the brewery was sold to the Caledonia brewery from Edinburgh but this actually only lasted until 2008 when Heineken bought over the Caledonian but they actually didn't want the Harveston brewery and during this partnership though they actually struck a deal to age a special cask version of their old engine oil in Highland Park casks and they called this the Ola Duff series and in 2009 they actually began kegging their beers and they're now starting to outgrow their new purpose-built facility in Alva and they're actually strapping fermentation vessels to the outside of the building. It's quite funny when you go past this thing, it's just a sort of square building and then you see these tanks just sort of glued or screwed into the outside of this building so it's quite funny. But now the brewery actually have a total of 17 employees and it appears that they'll grow further. Their exports over to the states and to the Commonwealth countries are really, really starting to, to, to grow and as I say they're producing some really top quality beers. This is one of the sort of flagship Scottish craft breweries if you like along with Williams Brothers probably Broughton and Brewdog as well but the other ones are kind of up and coming like I mentioned in one of my other videos Fine Ales are another really really good brewery who will be, uh, be on the rise in the next few years but just to list that's your brief history of the Harveston breweries there but just to list the different beers you can get from these guys you get the Shehalion which as I mentioned is a really really beautiful lager I've reviewed that one for you already the Bitter and Tiffseed which again I've reviewed that's another nice one you have the Old Engine oil here which is a really which I hear is a really nice beer you have the engineers reserve the also for a little period had the wild hop IPA and you have the gold the wild hop gold sorry and you also have the Ola Duv series which I mentioned you get the 12, 16 and 18 and oddly enough I've never seen these in the shops here so I, may, I, I might actually need to go to the brewery and pick up some of these beers to review for you at a later stage but there's two new beers that have been introduced since I was away in Germany since January and this is the Ridge which is a pale ale and they also have an amber ale called the Broken Dial and I had that at my local Witherspoons the other night on cask and that's a really nice one I need to see if I can find the bottle of that to review for you as well and the brewery website does actually have a blog where you can keep an eye on the latest happenings and as I mentioned before at the start of the video the link to that is in the video description there so let's get on with the tasting of this guy and see how we get on here and this beer from what I understand one of the guys at the brewery uh, he actually worked for Ford for a number of years and this beer is named after the fact that it came out and looked like the, en the old engine oil that came out of the car so this is why it's named the old engine oil and as I mentioned before it's allowed them to create the Ola Duv range and it was introduced in the year 2000 so I'll just bring up the camera and let you have a little look at the label of this one here. As you can see, it's got one of the old Ford cars on the uh, on the bottle there. It has Harvey the mouse at the top, the brewery's mascot. You can see Harvey just in there, and you can also see that on the bottle cap as well. And these are, this is the standard bottle cap for the Harveston Brewery and that for some reason they actually changed the labels on their beers quite recently and uh, but they they kept this one the same I'm not sure why they changed all of them except this one but to read out the hop and malt profile for you for this guy this one is a 6% porter beer when it's in the keg and bottle apparently it's 4.5% in the cask though and this seems to be a common thing with the Harveston Brewery their cask beers are a different ABV from their uh, bottle and and, uh, and keg beers if you like but this guy is hopped with Galena hops 
East Kent Goldings and Fugles and it's also malted with uh, roast barley and oats as well so like I say this guy is meant to be a really awesome beer Paul from PA Brew News really recommended that I review this one and it's got great reviews so far so I'm sure it'll be good so let's pop it open as you can see just a little bit of smoke coming out on the open in there and it's, oof, this is a really really dark beer in fact really sort of dark rosewoody chestnut Let's see if I can get a little bit of head on this guy a little bit of sedimentation just came out there on the end but as you can see if I hold this one up for you if I hold it up to the light I'm not even getting a ruby a sort of ruby tinge to this guy it's very very dark definitely a sort of rosewoody kind of chestnutty colour if you like there's about a half finger of a quite a dark actually tan head on this guy it's a lot darker than just the kind of uh, beigey heads that you get on some of these beers but let's have a little look at the aroma and see how we get on here just give it a little sugar and see what we can get a lot of roasted coffee actually coming off but at th that time at the same time it's a very sort of nice and sweet chocolatey aroma the chocolate is actually a bit more prominent than the coffee the coffee is underlying though and I always find coffee aromas can kind of overpower a lot of the other complexities in the aroma but this one's more of a sweet chocolatey smelling aroma here but I think there's a sort of underlying of kind of tree colour molasses I think the Americans would call it a kind of treacly dark brown sugar a eh, kind of element to this beer as well and I think perhaps there is kind of a you can pick up just a slight little hint of earthy character but it's very very faint the big component in the aroma here definitely is the sort of sweet chocolate that's coming out and there is that coffee underlying to it as well and you can pick up just on the sort of back of the nose if you like the more I don't know how you would describe it exactly but on the back on the deeper end when you breathe it in a little bit deeper you are picking up just a little bit of the kind of reddish fruits you know the sort of berries and kind of plums and the, the sort of darker fruits that you would associate with porters of course here so let's give it a taste and see how we get on first thing that's striking me with this beer is it's really really well balanced in fact it's a very complex flavour but yeah it's got that nice roasted malt kind of coffee underlying to it and that sort of sticks towards the front of the tongue actually it seems to stick from the to towards the front of the tongue all the way through the taste But the chocolatey character that's coming out in it is actually really quite sweet and sort of quite uh, it almost tastes a little bit milky there's a good creamy mouthfeel to this guy in fact so it's quite an interesting flavour like I say it's very very complex but the roasted coffee malts are coming out in the opening and they're staying right towards the end sort of moving a little bit more further towards the front of the tongue I would say they start more in the middle and they seem to just kind of merge, come a little bit more forward but it's a big chocolatey eh, bait malt base on this one and it's complemented as well I think maybe that some of the chocolatey sweetness there is some sort of eh, kind of brown sugary kind of treacle molasses flavour in there and I think it's actually mixing quite well with the, with the chocolate flavours and that's what's making it kind of so sweet if you like it's a very kind of sweet and nice creamy flavoured beer yeah I would definitely stick with that that kind of analysis of it it's definitely the sort of uh, treacle and molasses -y brown sugars that are complementing that chocolatey taste that comes in just after the coffee yeah the coffee comes in just with a little slight hint at the start and then you're kind of your mouth is sort of washed with this kind of dark chocolatey sweetness in there and it's uh, and then the coffee just kind of comes back out again to what on the edge of the tongue and it is actually a little bit bitter on the finish the bitterness does have a wee bit of earthy character to it I would say yeah there's a little bit of the kind of earthy character that you would sometimes associate with these beers uh, towards the end of the uh, to towards the end of it and it complements it really well it's a very very kind of complex beer I think there's maybe some kind of vanilla -y flavors in here as well and there is there probably is just a little bit of kind of the fruity the fruit flavors that you associate with the esters in the beer too
yeah I think there is a little bit of kind of the fruit is very very subtle it's more of a kind of berryish fruit a more it's almost a little bit like the, it has the mildness of strawberries I would say it has that kind of mild flavor it's not like the more kind of plummy flavours that can be a little bit more uh, cloying if you like. It's got a very mild fruity sweetness that's underlying it as well but like I say the big component in this beer really is the kind of nice blend between the, the sort of brown sugars, the treacles and stuff and the sweet kind of milky chocolate in this one. It's a really really nice beer. In the terms of the mouthfeel of this guy I'd say this one's quite full bodied. Maybe you could maybe describe it as mid to full bodied but it definitely leads to the more full bodied thing. And it has a very smooth yet quite an oily mouthfeel to it as well and soft carbonation and it, it really is it, slightly creamy as well. It's a very kind of complex mouthfeel to this guy. Yeah, definitely quite an oil, like I say, quite an oily mouthfeel. It's very, very smooth and it has the soft carbonation. Although I would say in the middle of the tongue, in fact, it is it does have a little bit more of an attack to it, but a very kind of nice, <coughs> sorry, a nice slightly creamy mouthfeel to it as well. What I would say about this beer is it is actually kind of quite heavy going, but this is a beer you maybe want to have, this is a, another beer that I would want to have as a dessert, you know, with like some chocolate fudge cake or something like that. It would go really well with that. It actually recommends on their website that you drink that you drink it with bangers and mash, which I was quite interested with. Maybe I'll try that at some point and have it with a nice sort of beef gravy or something like that. It would actually, I think it would actually go quite well with that, but Anyway, this is another really kind of top class beer that's come out of the Harveston Brewery. As I've said before in my beer reviews, you get some really kind of top notch stuff out of these Scottish craft breweries. Some of them are producing some really excellent stuff and by all accounts, the Scottish beer is really standing up well against the American beer and other countries in the World Beer Festival. So long may that continue in my opinion. And um, I hope you found my, my review of this beer informative. Please, as I always say, please let me know in the comment section your own thoughts on this beer. If you want a second opinion of it, go and check out Paul from PA Brew News. Te check out his channel. He loves this beer, so I'm sure you'll, you, you'll get a very, very good review out of him for it. I think I've watched his one on that, and I thought it was really good. So I'll, uh, go and check that out if you are interested. But please, like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. There will be a lot more Scottish beer reviews. I'll see if I can get the two new beers that I mentioned that, they'd, uh, that they've brought out recently and some of the Ola Doves as well so I will revisit the Harveston Brewery in the future I hope you've enjoyed this beer review please do all the usual YouTube stuff like, subscribe, share and uh, I'll catch you soon with another beer review Cheers!